Good. So uh, I want to talk a little bit today about the benefits of doing a pre-A level course at the UK's number one uh, academic school. Obviously, the, the number one academic school is Cardiff Sixth Form College, uh, of which I am the very proud uh, principal. And when I talk about pre-A level courses, I'm talking principally about our GCSE courses uh, that we run prior to our A levels. So my name is, is Gareth Collier, as I've mentioned, and I'm the principal here uh, at Cardiff Sixth Form College. So many of you may have heard things about Cardiff Sixth Form College previously. Uh, we are very proudly uh, the, the top academic school in the United Kingdom over the last 11 years. Uh, and you can see from our results here, they've been consistently high. We're the only school in the United Kingdom uh, to ever post greater than 90% A star to B consistently. Uh, and um, the only school here that's managed to gain uh, a 99% score for A star to A. So it's a, we're a very high academic achieving college, uh, and that's what we're renowned for. And we've had many students in the past from, uh, from Bulgaria and from Integral themselves who have achieved extremely well within our school. Um, league table results, if we look at the league tables, they weren't published last year uh, and won't be published this year because of COVID-19. Uh, but if we take the results uh, for the five year period from 2015 to 2019, you can quite clearly see us there right at the top of the uh, league tables with a, a variety of very selective uh, and very exclusive uh, British boarding schools in that list below us. Uh, so we're extremely pleased to be he heading the or spearheading the academic challenge uh, for top schools in the United Kingdom. Uh, but probably the most important thing that students uh, need to know about us is where they're going to go to next. Cardiff Sixth Form College is an excellent place uh, and academically you will achieve uh, excellently. But really that's we're only a stepping stone onto your next place of education. We are education, educating people who want to go on to do top courses in top universities. Uh, we, are, we are simply a pathway, if you like, to excellence. And you can see from our destinations last year, we had 32 students went to UCL, 26 to LSE, uh, 26 to Imperial and 17 to, to Oxbridge, so Oxford or Cambridge University, and then 16 to Hong Kong University and the Chinese University of Hong Kong, probably the two most selective universities in the whole of the world. Uh, and we have uh, the majority of the non uh, or students not educated in Hong Kong, the majority of those students come from Cardiff Sixth Form College. So we're extremely pleased with the quality of the destinations that we have. But in terms of choices, uh, we are renowned for being the number one school for medicine placement into top universities. And you can see there we had 33 students went on to do medicine last year from us. But equally strong in economics, finance and management, natural science, engineering and architecture, maths and computer science, dentistry, vet veterinary studies and law. But many, many other subjects with, with uh, smaller numbers going on to these courses. So an extremely uh, highly challenging curriculum which prepares students for the top courses in, in university. But let's talk a little bit about our IGCSEs. In 2019, we introduced a new course. We recognise that actually working with our A-level students, when they arrive with us in the uh, September of their first year, we only have one year in which to prepare them adequately to be able to be successful at top universities on their applications for top universities. It's a short period of time. And we introduced in 2019 a one-year uh, GCSE course for students who wanted to join us age 15 or 16 and have a preparation year before they started their A-levels. And there are many reasons that are, are positive for the introduction of this course. Number one, it gives us uh, more time to embed uh, the British style of education into students before they take the extremely demanding A-level courses. It allowed us here to be able to have a level of achievement at GCSE, which gave students access to places like Oxford University, which puts a lot of emphasis on uh, GCSE grading and the number of subjects that, she, that students get. If we looked at uh, last year, on average, the number of A stars at GCSE that students had for Oxford and Cambridge was eight. And so by having eight A star subjects, you are immediately giving yourself access to uh, applying to places like Oxford or Cambridge University. So we started this one year course. It also gives us crucially time to spend on the super curriculum. And I'll speak a little bit more about supercurriculum in a moment, uh, but this is a term coined by Oxford and Cambridge University for uh, all of the things that you do outside of the classroom, which lead to adding value to you for your future career. 
So extremely important uh, that they uh, are, are the things that we focus on. And again, I'll speak a little bit more about those in a moment. Uh, this, after the first year of our one year GCSE course, we were delighted to be able to share our success with, uh, with the rest of our community. Uh, we, were, we were ranked number one in the Telegraph Small Schools League tables for GCSEs that year. Only 14 candidates in our first year, but they performed excellently. You can see there 83.87% A star to A, uh, an enormous, uh, an enormous um, achievement in just one year. In our second year, uh, as you see, I'll just, sorry, just slip back to the last slide. In the last second year, we went to 93% A star to A uh, for 2020, but there were no league tables produced at that time. So you can see we had a 10, just under a 10% increase uh, in the quality of our top students going uh, from this one year GCSE course. So uh, we've managed to translate our, our excellent academic performance uh, at A-level into GCSE success. A very difficult thing to do with younger age students and my staff have worked extremely hard to make these courses uh, the number one courses in the United Kingdom. So why is it important? Well, if we look, take a little look now at some of our students from that class of 2019 that graduated from our GCSE course, I've chosen just four of these students here for you to look at. All four of these students came on to study A-levels at Cardiff Sixth Form College. And again, I'll speak a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, you can see here David. Uh, David actually came to us wanting to become an engineer. He wanted to do biomedical engineering at university. Whilst with us, he, he became uh, interested and enthralled by medicine itself. Uh, and he was able to change his uh, career choice to medicine uh, once he finished his IGCSEs. And we started to prepare him for that during his A-level course. He has an offer to study medicine at the University of Oxford at Oriel College. Uh, that would not have been possible had he not achieved uh, his results at GCSE uh, to prepare himself for uh, the Oxford University entrance tests. Similarly, Francisca, uh, a British student, uh, came to us uh, and had a range of, uh, of scores at A star A and B at her GCSEs with us and uh, is going on. She similarly wanted to be a medic when she came to us. And if she'd joined us straight for A-levels, she had been preparing to become a doctor. By coming to us for a one-year GCSE course, she was able to understand a little bit more about herself. She was, she was able to understand what she was good at and what she really enjoyed and what she became passionate for. And that actually turned out to be PPE, philosophy, politics and economics. And because she'd been with us for the one year course, we were able to uh, change her education program and move her towards the right subjects to be able to go on to uh, now with her offer for K King's College London uh, to study PPE. Coco there from Hong Kong, a fantastic student, uh, seven A stars, uh, straight across the, the IGCSE range, super, super committed to her course. And she has got a place at Hong Kong University to study medicine next year. And then last but not least, Sandy, uh, Sandy here uh, has similarly followed uh, Francisca into the PPE field for philosophy, politics and economics. And she has also a place at the University of Oxford uh, at Lincoln College. Uh, for David and for Sandy going on to Oxford without coming on to our GCSE course for one year, they would not have been able to access these courses at the University of Oxford. Uh, they would simply have not had the correct experience uh, and the correct level of input to apply uh, for those universities. So it prepares you, it gives you the opportunities that they would not have had if they had come to the United Kingdom age 16 to go straight into an A-level course. Coming a year earlier, we've managed to get them um, places into top universities. So a very clear indication that these students uh, are excellent. I would also point out that both David and Sandy were both recipients of our scholarships here uh, at Cardiff Sixth Home College, uh, uh, students who were assessed as being excellent from uh, from the entrance tests to be able to perform well at the end of the day. So our new pathways. We have, as you can see there at the bottom of that slide, our one year GCSE course, which is what I've just been talking about uh, for those students. We are starting in September 2022, a two year GCSE course, a more traditional year 10 and year 11 course, the same that all other schools in the United Kingdom will do. We will still keep our one year GCSE course running parallel to the two year course. So why do two years? Why not stay with one? Well, the most important uh, reason is that we can spend a longer period of time preparing students to be able to um, lay the foundations for uh, moving into A-levels and then on to top universities. 
Too many schools and too many institutions and too many young people uh, don't think about their university destinations early enough. They come to us in year 12, still not sure uh, sometimes about what their motivation is, what, what they are good at. And an example there would be Sandy and Francisca from the previous slide. Um, one thinking they wanted to do biomedical engineering, one thinking they wanted to do medicine, both ending up in completely different courses. And because they'd spent their time with us in year 11, we were able to explore what they were good at and actually what they really should be doing when they went on for A-levels and then to top universities. Well, if we do that for year 10, we have even more time to help to prepare them. We have um, the, uh, the, the time to spend on depth of subject and breadth of subject. We can spend time on the super curriculum and also their extracurricular studies as well to build the best profile they can have for moving on to A-levels. Now, there, there is no straight given pathway between year 11 and year 12 at Cardiff Sixth Form College. Every student that moves on to do A-levels must win their place with excellence. So those that join in year 10 or year 11, they will be performing to an excellent standard in order to be able to apply to come to us for the, for the two-year A-level course. And the majority of our students do make that journey or have made that journey for the last three years. So we're tremendously excited about the introduction of this two-year GCSE course and I'm going to focus now a little bit on the sorts of things that we will be able to do uh, in addition uh, to the, that which we do on the one-year GCSE course. So we have a unique curriculum. Uh, here our students will do GCSEs or IGCSEs in biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, English, additional mathematics, and then two subjects from the humanities and languages section which is currently art, business studies, French, geography, German, and history. Uh, and so our students there will have the opportunity uh, to actually sit for, um, I think it's 11 uh, GCSEs, if we include their own language, if it's available uh, from the examination sports. So a, a large number of GCSEs. But the key number here is eight. We need to get students to have eight or more uh, GCSEs uh, to make them accessible to top universities in the future at top grades. One of the mistakes that many schools do make is that they, they have uh, students doing um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 GCSEs. And sometimes they compromise on quality. Sometimes they look at quantity of subjects rather than quality of subjects. We will absolutely be looking at quality because it's the top grades and the top subjects that will get you access to the top programs uh, at university or in the future A-level school. On top of that, uh, the uh, curriculum is, of course, much broader than the subjects, uh, and we will be working on effective communications, uh, really probably the most important part of any uh, UK education uh, product, effective communication. When we are applying for, for places in top schools or top universities, we have to learn how to sell ourselves to the correct institution. We need to be able to write effectively. If we can't write effectively, we'll never be able to fill in our personal statement on our UCAS form to be able to apply to the universities. We have to be able to write a sales pitch about ourselves. And so being able to communicate in strong written English is important. But also we need to be able to speak properly. For many of these courses that we're looking at now, interviews are important. And we need to be able to express ourselves effectively in a spoken interview format. So effective communication, probably the biggest and most important of these practical courses that we undertake. But of course, you'll quickly recognize that your, your written communication for your personal statement and your oral communication, your spoken communication in your interview are useless if you have nothing to write about and nothing to speak about. And that's not going to be about your academic subjects. We have to be able to add value to young people uh, in the way that they can show universities that they will be effective and important people uh, in their university in the future. So we deal with critical thinking. Students have to think critically about things and problem solve. Uh, they will look at difficult situations from the point of view of a variety of different stakeholders and create their own opinions as to the right or the wrong or the better uh, or the worst way to be able to achieve the solving of a particular problem. They will have the ability to lead and to be part of teams. Uh, 
uh, whether you're a team which is working on a research project for uh, some form uh, of um, science project, whether you're working on one of our robotics teams or our computer science teams uh, working with, with artificial intelligence or our NASA space settlement design team uh, looking at designing space settlements in, in Mars for competitions, you will have the opportunity to work and lead teams from an early age. Only by doing this are you able to amass sufficient evidence to be able to talk about what you may do in a teamwork or leadership uh, perspective. Entrepreneurship. Uh, we have a number of students here, in fact all of our students on the GCSE course this year who took economics are working uh, within young businesses. And they are uh, actually working towards uh, competitions where they represent the school externally in um, business management and uh, economic theory. And today I'm delighted to say that uh, one of our teams has made it through to the national finals uh, in one of these competitions. And we're uh, fingers crossed to see how well they will do in the future. We need to make sure we maintain healthy bodies and healthy minds for young people. After, they, after all, they will be joining us age 14. Very different uh, in, in uh, the type of person that joins us when they're 16. And so we have a well-programmed uh, courses on mindfulness and uh, physical education for sport. Uh, and students will all have the opportunity to take part in these as well as ICT and uh, artificial intelli intelligence courses whilst they're with us. So we're preparing students, both body, mind and spirit, for higher and further study. So it is, it is unique. And the reason why it's unique is that, as I said previously, we are on a four-year pathway to university. We are thinking about the skills that you will be required to demonstrate in top universities at age 14. We're not going to wait until you start your last two years at school. That doesn't mean it's going to be the same as it is for your, for your A-level studies. It will be appropriately tailored to the level that you would want for your GCSEs. So a very exciting uh, program, which is designed to get you to top universities. So what do universities want? What, what, sh what should we be looking at uh, when we're dealing with young people who are highly aspirational uh, at age 14? Well, this is a survey uh, taken by uh, a group of Russell Group universities in the United Kingdom who had greater than 20% international student intake in 2018. And you can see here that ranked right at the top Good written English is absolutely the key to top achievement at university. And so we will be spending a lot of time looking at that through literacy uh, and through the, the English programme and also through the, uh, the literacy within other subjects. You need to think critically and act critically. Well, I've mentioned critical thinking as one of our, our core uh, additional courses. You have to have passion for your chosen subject at university. Well, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you at GCSE to develop passion. You're, you're probably coming to this thinking, oh, I don't know what I want to do at university. I don't know what I want to do as a career. Well, that's why you come to us early. So we can help you to discover what it's like to really be a doctor, to be an engineer, to be a scientist, to be a lawyer, uh, to be somebody who wants to work in management. You understand uh, how uh, to make up your mind which area to move into by practicing uh, critical pathway skills in all of these areas during your GCSE years. If we're waiting till we get to our A-levels, it is a very intense and very pressurized environment if you want to change your mind in year 12 uh, as to what your career choice is. If you're changing your mind in year 10 or 11, it's not such a difficult process for us to help you to put right. A positive attitude towards study. Students that come to us, none of them come to us because their parents want, to come, want them to come here. They all come to us because they absolutely want to study in the number one school in the United Kingdom and they have a positive attitude towards study. And again, that is something that universities here really value. Working independently, working collaboratively, working in teams, uh, all of these things are important and independent uh, study is what we are helping people, helping students with us to develop the skills for. Very difficult to be an independent thinker and an independent studier at age 14 because our schools uh, all around the world are driven towards uh, teachers giving information to students and students not necessarily needing to think independently. We work very hard on trying to create uh, independent thinking opportunities for young people that when they come to their interviews for university or their university courses themselves, they can uh, work on their own and they can work to depth uh, and, and excellently uh, without relying on others. 
problem solving skills. I talked about that in critical thinking. A good grasp of mathematics. Mathematics underpins everything. I always I tell this story when I when I'm talking to students who uh, come to me and they say that they want to be a lawyer in their future. And I ask them what the most important uh, facilitating subject for law is. And very, very few of them will actually say mathematics. Mathematics is a problem solving skill. It's a, an ability to look at something and think your way through a problem. OK, so in mathematics, you come up with a, with a number answer. But it's the process of thinking, it's the problem solving that allows you to think through uh, a, a particular conundrum, a particular difficulty. And lawyers uh, and people working in humanities and social sciences, they're forever coming up against problems and difficulties that have to think their way through. And having a good grasp of mathematics will help them to do that. In addition, our world is even more statistically led now than it ever has been at any time in the past. Uh, we're working with, uh, with websites. We look at the social media sites at the moment uh, that are all um, driven by algorithms. They're driven by statistics. If you've ever sat there with your mobile phone and you've had advertisements for various different things pop up on your screen, they're not random. They are driven by your browsing history and they are driven by the algorithms which have been built into the, the, the browsers to be able to assess what you should have advertised for you. And that comes through mathematics. That comes through an understanding of how number can be applied uh, to word problems. Uh, resilience, extremely important. Uh, students will have good times and bad times and being able to uh, bounce back from the bad times is much more important than actually struggling with the bad times in the first place. So knowing that you have the strength of character to be able to step up and be resilient, something valued very highly by universities. And at times uh, like we are going through at the moment with the global pandemic of COVID-19, uh, then actually this resilience is, is coming to the fore. Uh, and uh, comments from universities that our students have gone to uh, last year and the year before uh, are that they are very pleased with the levels of resilience that Cardi Six and College students show. Uh, they, be, they have dealt with stress, they've dealt with difficult situations whilst they've been here, they've dealt with intensity of study, and so when it comes to university they are well prepared uh, to be able to do well. And through doing it uh, for a four-year pathway through GCSEs and A-levels, we will hopefully develop that level of resilience to a greater depth than we are able to do with our A-level students. I've talked about leadership and teamwork opportunities uh, and, and also students will do work experience. Even from age 14 onwards, we will have students who will be working on uh, how to uh, relate their skills to the workplace, allowing them to observe uh, and take part in workshops which allow people to see what it's like to be a doctor, what it's like to be a dentist, what it's like to be an engineer or a lawyer uh, or an economist, and giving them access to the workplace to, to really put context to, to their academic studies and uh, they want people who are excellent in all areas performing in creative arts and sporting activity and I'll come on to our extracurricular program in a moment and they also want students who have an awareness of global or cultural differences uh, something which uh, British boarding schools with, with large numbers of international students are ideally placed to be able to, to provide so you can see that's what universities want and that's what we've used to tailor our curriculum We've used that information, we created a two-year GCSE course followed by a two-year A-level course, which is completely tailored to moving you into top universities. Many schools use their GCSE courses as a standalone broad education, holistic education base, and there is nothing wrong with that. But for top students with top ambitions and top aspirations, we need to be able to think more clearly about how we can add value to young people in that critical GCSE course year age from 14 to 16. So at Cairo Sixth Home College, we are much more tailored and much more targeted to success than you would find in a standard GCSE course. Uh, I mentioned super curricular program earlier on, a, a reminder, it's what you do outside of the classroom, uh, a term coined by Oxford and Cambridge University uh, to support your future career. So we have international citizenship experiences. So our GCSE students uh, two years ago uh, went to Europe and they went to various different places in France, in Belgium, in the Netherlands uh, to look at various different um, opportunities within the United Nations, within industry uh, and uh, some cultural experiences and work experience whilst they were there in those three countries. Um, oh, I don't know if you can, uh, can you still see me? Yep, good. Somebody else is trying to log into my Zoom. 
There we go. One second. There we go. Um, we have work observations, as I mentioned, uh, students will be able to go to various different work opportunities uh, and uh, experience the world of work in the UK, uh, as well as internationally. Uh, our international citizenship experience for our GCSE courses is currently in Europe, uh, and we have the, these ICE trips that will run in places currently like India, Tanzania and Malaysia uh, for our AS into A2 students, and you can transition into those at a future point if you wish. We have a careers award. Uh, this is where young students from 14 to 16 are able to undertake a whole variety of activities to help them to understand what their future career choice might be. It's very structured and it's driven by a, a department of 10 uh, members of staff focused on um, allowing people to understand the best way forward. We use Morrisby as a, as a testing system, uh, we use Bridgeview uh, as a platform, uh, and we have a variety of different uh, activities which help people to choose the correct career. Lots of industry speakers coming in to, to support this programme so people will understand what the progression is uh, for them when they do the university degree into the world of work. Competitions, it's a competitive world. We've got to learn to win and we've got to learn to lose. And then we're going to learn to bounce back and win again. So lots of competitions, both in terms of academia and in supercurricular program. Enrichment trips. So we have, uh, for example, uh, we have a, a very good genetics trip uh, to the uh, zoo, Bristol Zoo, which deals with genetics in animals, uh, which supports the GCSE biology trip uh, and all sorts of other different uh, enrichment trips here for, for other subjects. Uh, I mentioned just biology in, in passing. Uh, debating or Toastmasters, two great organisations here which help people to develop their oracy, to develop their skills in speaking and to allow them to address individuals and larger groups of people in particular ways and particular formats. A very, very valuable uh, super curricular programme. And uh, something which we are developing at the moment, the Young Scholars Cup. This is a, a uh, competition which happens uh, globally uh, and you, uh, you enter in regional rounds uh, going right the way through to, to national and international rounds and eventually you can end up representing your school in some fairly big uh, Scholars Cup competitions all over the world. Uh, this is to do with academic excellence and covers the main areas that we would look at uh, in our, our development program for GCSE students. So heavy reliance upon debating, heavy reliance on critical thinking and on creative writing and on uh, thematic understanding of global issues such as uh, environmental awareness, uh, which is a, a key program this, this year. So uh, some very good super curriculum programs designed to give students a wealth of experiences which they can build their character with and they can then talk about when they are writing uh, their university applications and uh, at interview. So very, very important that super curriculum program is well developed for ambitious young people. This is very different from the extracurricular program. The extracurricular program I shall come to uh, in a moment. So we're talking about preparing for universities. Too many schools, and we are guilty of this in the past, of leaving this too late and waiting until students get to us for the last possible moment. And so we'll be starting this in our GCSE years, understanding about what it takes to apply to a top British university or a top American university or a top Australian university or a top uh, Southeast Asian or European university. We have a, an excellent uh, careers team here backed up by Duke's Education's uh, leading companies of Oxbridge applications, uh, the Medic Portal and the Lawyer Portal and A-list uh, for American university applications. We're introducing people to understand what it is they need to do, when they need to do it by, and how they need to do it to be successful for a top application. And I won't take you through all of those things on the screen there, but those are some, uh, some of the key things that we will be doing in order to ensure that all of our students are well equipped to apply for universities, to take the university admissions tests, and to be successful in gaining places at top universities. I would say that this year we have had uh, 22 offers to top universities in the United States. Uh, probably our best year for American university placements for our, our candidates this year, including uh, Ivy League places in uh, Ivy League uh, places in, in universities such as Columbia. Uh, so we're delighted by that this year uh, and uh, evidence of the, of the strong base that we've had with our one year GCSE course. All of our students 
that came through that one year course and are now graduating this year for, uh, to go to university are going to top universities in the UK uh, and uh, in the USA. Our teaching staff are uh, extremely experienced, over 15 years of the, uh, experience um, uh, is the average, I beg your pardon, for, for our, our teachers, some of them have much more than that. Lots of them have been working with the exams boards uh, to be able to understand how to prepare students effectively to pass these examinations. Um, and you will be in class for more time than you will ever spend in another school. Uh, we are there to make sure you have not just the lesson time, but the support time uh, and the, the wider learning that you get in each subject uh, through all of our, our, our teachers. So extremely experienced, uh, never worked with teachers like this or in a school that has a teaching style like this in my past. Um, extracurricular, we do all of this. So, so far, you, my presentation has been focused on what gets you into university or what gets you into a top career. Um, we still do all of the fun things. So we have a glee club, we have uh, sports competitions, we have inter-house competitions, we run the Duke of Edinburgh's awards scheme, we have art club, we have music club, we have orchestras, we have choirs, we have glee club, all sorts of things that go on uh, that are interesting and exciting as part of the extracurricular range. What we don't do is we don't spend lots of time sitting in buses traveling to other schools to do competitions. We do lots of internal competition and sometimes schools will come to us. But we maximize students' time in uh, developing their character skills for their careers and as part of the relaxation and the fun that they would have, we have a range of extracurricular activities to help students to relax and, and be well-rounded people. We do this through CREATE. CREATE is our pastoral management tool. Uh, we've just uh, won another award with this. We've just won the Independent Schools Association uh, Award for um, Best Pupil Development uh, across a, a range of pastoral and academic skills. And CREATE is what we've used for that. So this is a programme, it's an online programme, which maps and tracks student activity in six key areas. And you can see those written there. And it covers academia, it covers careers, it covers uh, physical development, it covers mental development, uh, it covers work observation, um, volunteering and charitable work, a whole range of things. And in order to gain the top award in this, the Platinum Award, uh, you would need to be able to be excelling in all of these areas. And if you do excel in all six of these areas, it makes you uh, uh, somebody who is absolutely well equipped to apply for a, a top university. So we've created this because uh, there wasn't another, uh, another program on the market that was good enough, that uh, we've built it ourselves. It's absolutely fantastic uh, and means that nobody slips through the gap. Nobody, nobody comes to a university application who suddenly doesn't have what they need uh, to, to apply. Uh, and this is particularly so for our students that have joined us in the GCSE course. Um, we've got all of the normal pastoral care systems in place to cover this and the heads of house that look after this uh, will be looking after students' welfare and social care. So still so parents, when you're sending your, your young uh, children to us age 14, uh, you can rest assured that we have the best pastoral care and management system that, uh, that I've, I've seen with a whole range of people able to look after you and, and care for you, including the house parents, the graduate residential assistants, guardians, uh, the nurse, the counsellors, the listening ear, the students board officers, the teachers, the tutors, the prefects, the heads of house, the buddies, the senior managers, we're all here uh, to help you uh, to be able to be successful uh, and to make sure that you're looked after and cared for well. Something that I always take a, a very careful look at when my children have been looking for places in schools in the past. How well supported are they in terms of pastoral care? And uh, you saw on the university uh, requirements, they're wanting uh, students that are good in a, in a global or a multicultural context. Well, we have, um, we've combined uh, the sort of Western creative education with the, with the work ethic of Eastern education, which allows us to combine the cultural strengths of, of all education systems. Uh, and, and that gives, us, gives our students an edge because they're not learning through one uh, pedagogical system, they're learning through a, a combination uh, of systems. And to do that, we have uh, currently, that slide's incorrect, we have 42 nationalities represented uh, at the college at the moment. And so it's a truly multicultural environment. Uh, and students will gain global awareness and understanding of the needs of others, uh, which, is, which is fantastic. Just what universities are wanting. 
Uh, so where will, where will my children live when they go to, go to school? Well, they will live in these single ensuite rooms, uh, studio rooms or, or cluster rooms with shared kitchens if they want them or their own kitchen, as you can see in, the, in this particular picture here on the right. Uh, so all students will have the top quality uh, accommodation, all cared for and looked after by house staff uh, in, in a wonderful, uh, almost like a five star hotel uh, type accommodation. So they are well looked after uh, with plenty of support. And where are we? Well, we're in Cardiff, capital city of Wales, the most beautiful capital city in the world. So I'm sure some of you will disagree with me there. Uh, it's a fantastic place to, to grow up and it's uh, a boutique capital city. It's quite small. Uh, everything's within walking uh, reach of us. And we are currently located in the centre of the city. Uh, that picture in the bottom row in the centre is Cardiff Sixth Form College. And we are simply uh, a five minute walk from the castle uh, where students can be right in the middle of town. So it's a wonderful place to learn uh, and uh, as an urban college, we typify the sort of environment that you'll get when you go on to university. So what we say here uh, at Cardiff Sixth College is that we are not the end of your education. We see you you're gaining your results with us as actually only a stepping stone onto universities. And we believe that we provide the best possible stepping stone uh, for that to happen. And by now developing our two year GCSE course, we absolutely will give young people the, a better uh, pathway into top achievement than they would have got previously had they not undertaken their our two year GCSE course or uh, a potentially our one year course. So delighted to be able to present that to you today. Um, Cardiff Sixth Form College is a proud member of Duke's Education and we uh, are uh, somebody, we are a college which is part of a group and there are many other schools and colleges in there, which I'm sure Natalia will be able to talk to you about if that's of interest to you.